The 21st century is one of the most disruptive and contentious periods humanity has ever experienced. As we continue to battle the COVID-19 pandemic, the threats posed by climate change, rocketing food production requirements and the needs of millions of people in the digital age are becoming clearer. All this and more comes as the inequality gap widens between the world's wealthiest and poorest. Well, entrepreneur, futurist and author Brett King addresses these dilemmas in his new book, The Rise of Techno-Socialism. Brett, who founded the Moven banking startup and was heralded as the godfather of FinTech in the Australian magazine, joins us now from Brussels. Brett King, welcome to Cyboss TV. Hi. Hi. Hey. Hey, now, thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on. Now, we've, we've listed climate change, our increasingly digital world, and growing inequality among humanity's challenges. But there are plenty of others. So tell us more about these and the potential disruption that we face. Well, there are four major hurdles that we have to get over in respect to growing economic uncertainty for the 21st century. The first is obviously what you've mentioned, the pandemic, um, and of course, increasing inequality. Uh, the French economist Thomas Piketty says of the United States, for example, that it's uh, as, as an economy or a nation facing the greatest inequality of any uh, modern economy uh, in, at any point in history. Um, and then the two other emerging issues, obviously, is artificial intelligence and its impact on working practices and society in general, and then, uh, uh, of course, climate change. Mm. Uh, Brett, great to see you at Cybos. Uh, Cindy and myself absolutely want to know where you get your glasses. We'll continue that <laughs> offline because we, all, we both have to wear them. Now, your new book is called The Rise of Techno-Socialism, and I like it already. Can you tell us a bit about what techno-socialism means and how can it help? We looked at four potential outcomes for humanity over the next uh, 30 to 50 years or so. And, um, you know, we basically plotted this in terms of two primary axes. So inclusion or exclusionary uh, policies and practices and chaotic versus planned futures, or what you might traditionally call as dystopian versus utopian. And so in those, in those sort of four quadrants of outcomes, we have four potential futures. Now, these could all be happening similarly simultaneously, but the optimal outcome for, for humanity we determined to be one that was uh, collective in terms of its approach uh, for humanity, so inclusive, and using technology to reduce the cost of provision of universal services and better resource allocation for, for humanity. So that's techno-socialism. The other three quadrants are rejection of G, like artificial intelligence, which we call the latter stand scenario, um, failed states where we just wait too long to do things, which is fail to stand, and neo-feudalism, where the, uh, the problem of inequality sort of gets baked into uh, our future. Now, Brett, where do the roots of your new approach lie and how did you develop this thinking, i.e. what was the genesis of these solutions? In 2015, I wrote a book called Augmented Life in the Smart Lane, and it was really focused on how technology would change our lives personally, individually. But um, I realised in the process of writing that, that there was really um, systemic issues with how we might adapt to large-scale automation, for example. You know, the, the role that work has in our society, um, the way economies uh, operate. And so th this sort of border around this question of what are the organizing principles that we need for the 21st century? In terms of just pure economics, as an example, you know, we've created this culture of competition through economics, but it's competition, you know, corporation versus corporation and nation versus nation, when we're going to really need tools in the 21st century to come together and compete for humanity and the survival of the species. And that's really not something that we have baked into the current organizing principles around economics or policy setting. Mm. And uh, much of your thinking is based on the development and application of technology for enhancement. Do we need to change our education systems to seed a different approach? <laughs> That's a yes. Absolutely. It's, it's really critical. Um, you know, when we looked at this problem for uh, competitiveness in the 21st century, China is obviously fairly well placed for this. They're investing significantly in infrastructure with Belt and Road. They're investing significantly in artificial intelligence. And for every one PhD um, STEM graduate in the United States, China produces three. So we know that the, one of the biggest challenges we have over the next 20 to 30 years is as AI and automation 
automation changes the nature of work, we're going to have two simultaneous problems. Problems re related to techno unemployment because robots will be taking jobs, but also labour shortages in these new fields that are opening up because the education system we have today is designed for the 19th and 20th century and isn't really teaching uh, our students the core skills required for the 21st. Mm. Well, that's all we have time for, I'm afraid, Brett. So, Brett King, techno-socialist and glasses-style guru, thank you so much for joining us on Cybus TV.